Right. No way. Ain't no way I'm doing this. That's a lot of fog. None of these are snow, looks so. Cool. S T twenty two. That's the same damn car. One of these has black wheels then apparently. Ah, oh, it's the other way round. Yeah, it is slightly different. Oh, that's not too bad. I like. I quite like that. Mm, yeah, fuck it. Won't show up quite how dirty the car is because it'll be snow. Little high rev engine. This isn't rotary, is it? It's got almost that sound, but then the the low speed growls. I don't think are when it's like topped out. I'm not very good at hearing engines and understanding what they are. So, everybody talks about like the sound of the, the uh, V12 engines in F1 and how they were the best. How come the V12s sounded so like like a fucking motorbike, two cylinder motorbike? Because surely the more cylinders you've got, isn't it the less they move? Because each one's going so surely like a v8 is a low rumble whereas a two-cylinder on a motorbike is going ten of the fucking dozen or did they just have tiny piston heads were they like a liter <laughs> who fucking one liter just t uh, tiny piston heads I suppose that's better for acceleration or something. Because you can... Ah, oh fuck. Kind of knew that was going to happen. Because you can... Um, yeah, smaller... Smaller piston head is going to get moving faster than a massive old great whopping bore thing. And, oh yeah, and lighter pistons, less stress. Easier to rev up. Because less mass... There is science to it all. Just thank your lucky stars that you don't have to uh, equate revolutions per minute in your engines with aerodynamic efficiency. Because that's where we're at in cycling. Is higher RPM of leg pedalling speed. Is it actually less aerodynamic? And the answer is yes <laughs> the faster you pedal the less aerodynamic you are so you then have to correlate your pedaling efficiency and how low can you go without losing actual power output or making yourself like stressed more because depending on your physiology like i pedal really fast oh 
I pedal easy gears fast. High revs. And then there's my dad who literally... The reason I broke his shift lever, by the way, uh, for six months he didn't know he couldn't use his two front gears, his front shift, his front uh, gear changer, the actual mech, the bit that touches the chain, completely seized solid. Um, he didn't know because he just never changed into the easy gear. Which, you know, crack him. I need him to get I need him to send a message for me I keep meaning to say before we do fucking riding a hundred miles to Hunstanton I need to get him to message everybody in the group and like if you come down 20 minutes early on Saturday I will stand there with a spanner and go through everything that could be broken on your bike Because I guarantee you, somebody has something that's broken that they don't know about. My dad is a spanner for not not washing his bike at all. Having so he took it off roading, road bike. He's got two bikes. He's got well, he's got a couple more than two, but he's got two main bikes. One is mud guards, like kind of semi slick off road tires. Um, for gravel and for a bit of winter riding that's his winter type bike because it's got mud guards it's got everything then he's got his summer bike which is skinny slick tires bit faster bit lighter nicer in the uh oh, with his thumb oh fuck off don't hammer a crank you've got to use a crank pulley you're never getting him off if you hammer him um but you fucking tell yourself blue trying if you want But yeah, you, um, yeah, my dad went off-roading on it in the winter. It was black and then it fell off. His thumb fell off. <laughs> or the crank fell off. Just the nail. Yeah, so he went off-roading, and then he got a puncture he couldn't be asked to fix, so he swapped back onto the winter bike. The winter bike was being, the summer bike was being used in the winter because he couldn't be bothered to fix something that was wrong. Oh yeah, he didn't wash his bike, didn't wash his bike so the front bearings seized up. While he was waiting for new bearings to come and kept ordering the wrong size, he, um... He bought, he got on the other bike, then eventually that got a puncture, but he hadn't fixed the other one yet, so he fixed the other one instead of fixing the puncture. Um, then now he's had to fix the puncture because his tyre split on the other one, so it was very dangerous to ride and could have just gone pop at any point. Uh, but then today I went round to fix his other bike, not because he, he didn't know that that was a problem, but his bar tape had come undone. So he said, could you, like, re-bar tape it? Just fucking re-wrap it properly and give it a wash. I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. Got nothing better to do. So I hop, went round. And, you know, as, as is wise, when you do something like that, you want to check the bike over. You know, give it a good once over. So I, do, I go to give it a good once over. Oh, the front shift is not working. That'll be an easy fix. That'll just probably some dirt in it, stuck in it, because it's had dirt. The brakes were barely working because there was dirt stuck in them. So I go. And I change the bloody gear thing. Fucking ridiculous it was. 
I can't get it, still can't get it to move. I've sprayed it with WD-40 so much. But yeah, snapped the, snapped the shift lever inside internally. And it piece fell out. That bollocks. Alright, see you later dude. I will continue to grind. This rally's not going well.
Damn, I'm getting some difficult AI on this because I didn't think that was too bad. Jump. I fucking hate compatibility charts. Because there's official compatibility, and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, will that work with that? Because they don't say that that works with that, but I know that works with that. Did they update the new stuff with the old stuff? Yeah, that's the problem. It's trial and error, but it's expensive trial and error. You've got to buy the parts. At which point, you might as well just buy the correct bloody part. Because it's not actually that much cheaper to buy the incorrect part at this point. They're all about 40 quid. All the shifters are about 40 quid. The trial and error comes from... I'm hoping my dad doesn't go and buy an older shifter. It's like, there's a 50-50 chance that it works if he buys an older shifter. Like a proper 50-50 chance. Uh, that he actually buys the correct shifter. So I'm hoping he just buys one that's actually the correct model year. Because that would be lovely. We could, in theory, test it. I could recable my bike with his shifter. And then we know whether the modern shifter works with the old... 
how much of a pain in the ass is that? Quite a lot, actually. No, it's an infinite amount of pain in the ass. My shifter's connected to a fucking... That won't work. We'd have to take my mech and put it with his shifter, but he doesn't have a shifter. Never mind then. I just realised my shifter's also broken and I can't be able to fix it. I now have the parts to fix it, but I don't have bar tape. So I want to do it when I redo the bar tape anyway. So I'll get some bar tape soon. But it'll be fine. It'll be fine. We'll figure it out. We shall figure it out. Hopefully. Hopefully. After some pain you have a Windows 10 VM. Oh my god. See, I told you, it might as well be easier to learn how to set it up on Linux. Because you have to get the right .NET version. And the whole problem that we had was not with setting everything up. It was getting the DLLs and getting all of the files that were actually required. And setting up the environment. Now, I don't think it's easier to code it yourself. Because by the time you've set up the environment, you might as well copy-paste it. It might be easier to set up the environment from scratch and not try putting the code in. But then put the code in at the end. Because then you know where everything actually is supposed to go, rather than just guessing where things are supposed to go. Well, if you manage to figure it out, send us the uh, updated thing. I would say change your version. Change your uh, C sharp version if the feature. If you've copy pasted code from the mod and it doesn't work, change your C sharp version. Because this is an old Unity version. No, I told you I didn't. wasn't going to. Because I still had to eat. <laughs> I fed him, no. Yeah, because this is an old Unity version, I wouldn't be 100% certain it can use a newer version of C-Sharp. And any of that, so it's probably best to just work off of... Work off of old C-Sharps.
I didn't know there was a bump there, but I'll take it. I hope someone was watching that, because that was kind of cool. You don't have to use Visual Studio, you can use Mono Develop on Windows. I pretty much always did. I did install Visual Studio once for something, but I practically for developing stuff stuck with Mono Develop. Especially when I started mostly developing Unity games on an old crappy ThinkPad. Visual Studio. Unity was fine. It was the Visual Studio. You want the full Windows developer experience? Alright then. Are you listening to... Hold on. I'll, I'll get you the full experience. work. No. Right, unmute desktop audio then. Developers, 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 Absolutely proprietary. This is the same guy who sent the email about um, extend, embrace, extend, extinguish. This is the same guy who said uh, Linux is a scourge. That Bulma. I used to have this as my ringtone. <laughs> I was still using Windows at the time. I was using Windows, I wasn't particularly in the Microsoft ecosystem. I, The reason it was so easy for me to swap to Linux was because I always wanted things to be cross-platform. I always have. It's just like something. Things should work everywhere. I hate myself for never properly sinking into and learning Java. Because, like, Java stands for what I stand for. Write once, run anywhere. Yeah. 
Jesus Christ. This video was uploaded. So this is the video that the the if you Google YouTube MP3 converter, it's that video. But um, that video was uploaded 11 months after YouTube was formed. And still only 6.1 million views. Despite it being the default YouTube, M well, I suppose YouTube MP3 downloader doesn't, uh, probably doesn't give a view. It looks like it's been run through the YouTube MP3 converter a few times, but you know. it. The, I actually had trouble finding it. Because I searched for uh, developers, 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 music video song. It's just called developers because it's, it's early days YouTube. It is just developers because search wasn't really a thing. <laughs> no one cared about going viral. The guy probably uploaded it to test out YouTube and sent it to his mates. lol look at funny thing I made that was previously hosted on Newgrounds or something. Yeah, I think if I ever do another programming thing that is more than a script, I might just use Java. I might just say balls to it. I'm using Java. Yeah, I was too late for early... I was too late to be involved in early internet. I was just... here enough to know of it and see it and... see the rem... The worst part is I was here to see the remnants of the old internet. Gen 2 mindset. It compiles if you try hard enough. 24... That's mad that I did a... That's a very, very fast time compared to everything else. Like, to the old runs. And yet it's still not actually that fast in the grand scheme of things. Anyway, cheers, Tabo.